So let's look at some of the purposes of business and to see where some of the uh, frameworks can help uh, address those purposes. All right, so what we have here is a little mini framework that I've drawn up. What you have at the bottom here is what we refer to as the utility or the foundation of a business. Um, and, and really, the point that we're trying to demonstrate here is that there's common stuff within an organization that helps it deal with these three aspects here. In other words, reducing disadvantages, prolonging advantages, and creating or building advantages. So really, that's what business is about. It's about how they manipulate those advantages and those disadvantages. And there's this little layer in the middle here which talks about innovating, mixing, and assembling this utility layer at the bottom to be able to address those advantages and disadvantages. And really, one can look at it this way, in that there's a bit of a knowledge funnel that sort of runs beside this. And up, up at the top here, you have a variety of unresolved business challenges. All right, they're sitting at the top there. And these are some of the traditional um, aspects of the sea level. They're trying to reposition themselves in the market, increase market share. What products can they release to market to make it more appealing to customers? And really what you've got to do is you've got to take these unresolved business challenges and move them through this knowledge funnel, through this, a variety of phases, till eventually we get to the bottom here in which we have repeatable uh, business processes. And really that's what we're trying to do across this particular framework. We're trying to understand how we can create advantages uh, within the industry and reduce our disadvantages. And we're looking for clever ways to innovate, mix, and assemble our underlying utility layer in, uh, to create more differentiation within an organization. So you could almost see this piece here as being your differentiation part of an organization, as opposed to the utility layer which sits at the bottom here. And really, when we're talking about a framework like TOGAF, which is what we're going to be dealing with within uh, this particular subject, that's really a tool for this space at the bottom here. In other words, it's going to help you create, have a better understanding of how to build this utility layer. In other words, a standardized way of defining all the blocks that sit within your organization so that you can develop repeatable business processes. So remember I introduced this concept of the TOGAF, or the TOGAF framework, which helps you define this utility layer at the bottom. Oh, by the way, just to give you an idea of what a utility uh, layer is, in there you'll have your resources like people, you'll have some processes, you'll have different tools. So those are sort of common blocks within your organization, so to speak, that you can take and you can assemble into different ways to, to produce different outcomes within the organization. So TOGAF, the Open Group Architecture Framework, is an, currently an industry standard. And it's getting a lot of momentum within the architecture community, specifically because it has this agnostic nature. In other words, it's a glue that links together multiple different frameworks. So you'll hear a variety of other frameworks mentioned, like there's the Zachman framework, there's the DODAF, which is the Department of Defense Architecture Framework. Then there's the Treasury Enterprise Architecture Framework. Then there's the Federal Enterprise Architecture Framework. There's a, a large proliferation of different frameworks that actually exist in the industry. And different industries decide to use different pieces of those. The nice thing about TOGAF is it has a, a wide adoption at a global scale. And if you look at the image on your screen now, you'll see that adoption across this global scale. In other words, th th these are, are, are certifications that the, the Open Group um, qualifies people against and will allow you to ba basically walk into any architectural um, project across the globe and put this down as a, as a certification to, uh, to explain to your employers that you know and understand effectively how to build this utility layer. Now, the open, the open group are the custodians of the, of, uh, the, the TOGA framework. And what that means is that uh, they've assembled a variety of partners and, and vendors and different companies who all contribute to the creation of this framework. So in other words, TOGAF has, has been written by its members. So there's thousands of members around the globe, and they've all contributed their thinking into this space to help you build the standard. So it's not just some guy sitting in a dark room somewhere developing some asset but specifically developed um, for, uh, by the industry, for the industry, and that's what's given its popularity within the market. So let's have a look at some of the advantages of the TOGA framework. Really what you have, top right here, is a general method. So in other words, it can generally apply across a variety of problems across your organization and across a variety of levels. It's complementary to other frameworks, so it's not just a standalone. Um, it can su be, be supported by a variety of the other frameworks that exist in the market. You can quite easily just plug them in. It has wide adoption. Uh, it's a global framework with a number of vendors, uh, end user and customers using it, consulting companies, all the rest of it, uh, applying it to specific business problems. 
it's customizable. Some people think oh, it's too big to use and consume. Well, as an actual fact, there's a lot of ways that you can uh, massage it and customize it for your specific needs and size of organization. And it's free. Uh, it's an open standard. So you know, it, th there are some little nuances in the license there, but you can apply it for free to your specific company. There are some charges around if you sell those services to companies there. Um, it is agnostic. In other words, it's not, it doesn't have a specific alignment to one particular vendor or piece of technology. So it kind of sits above that layer. It's open. That's why it's an open standard. Uh, so you can add to it and take, take away from it. Uh, it is a broader community that you can use. It's free. So all of those aspects of open and, and interoperable uh, give it an additional advantage. It prevents reinvention of the wheel. That's the point of this utility layer, is that you're not reinventing all of the building blocks. It's a standard way to do it, and you don't have to go back to the drawing board each time. It has a strong alignment, or it's proposing a strong alignment between business and IT, and, and you'll learn over the, uh, the coming modules and how, how best to do that. Uh, it's also best practice. Uh, remember that there's 13, you know, 15,000 um, resources or individuals that have contributed to this. So they've all learned the ropes, and they've now contributed all of their thinking into this open standard. And remember, I referred to it as a glue. In other words, it's like a meta framework. So it binds all other frameworks together and glues all these components together so that you know all the interrelationships. And then finally, there's a community involved around it. So you can actually contribute back up into it if you find any fault. There's a community that you can work with, and you can have discussions with them to try and optimize it and make it into a better tool for, for use within your organization.